they're very important actually. This whole chat right now is using cryptography, your WhatsApp is using cryptography, all your social media uses cryptography. And they actually all use number theory. So I want you to start thinking every day, how many of you use, use all these social media platforms? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, Google, there's a new app, TikTok, there's Snapchat. We all use, you all use social media. If you don't, your parents do. If you're not using it now, you'll be using it when you start work. You'll be using it when you start going to college. But did anybody think about what is baked into these applications? How your pictures are kept secure? How your messages are kept secure from a third party? If I send a friend of mine a message, I want it to be private. How is that information kept private during transmission? Well, the answer is cryptography. Cryptography is the study of keeping messages and images secure. And cryptography uses a subject of mathematics, a field of mathematics called number theory. So what exactly is number theory? Well, actually, it's just as what do you think it is. It's just a theory of numbers. Number theorists, they study patterns in number systems. They learn how to derive equations to divide numbers, to find the greatest common divisors. They study a very specific group of numbers. But how, you must be thinking, how are these number patterns used in cryptography? Let me show you. We're getting a little bit abstract here, so bear with me. I have two definitions. Two definitions that are widely used in cryptography. First one is divides. We say that an integer divide A divides B, which in A line B where there's a third integer, c, b is equal to a times c. So that's saying that it's a perfect division. There's no remaining. So 2 would divide 4, which 4 is equal to 2 times 2. 3 divides 9, since 9 is equal to 3 times 3. 2 does not divide 5, because there's no integer c. I can make this equation solved. Right? Remember, integers are numbers that aren't fractions. So the next definition is something called congruence modulo. Now this one is a little bit more difficult to understand, but I guarantee you every day in the real life you're using this concept without fail, every day. You are seeing this modulo arithmetic and you don't even know about it. It's a shame because it's such an easy concept. Modulo arithmetic is just division with the remainder. We say that A is congruent to B modulo M. If m divides b minus a, 13 is congruent to 1 modulo 12, because 13 minus 1 is 12. 12 divides 12. Let's look at Julius Caesar, famous Roman Empire, very famous. He used encryption. He used modular arithmetic to encrypt messages in private communication. How did he do this? Well, Julius Caesar says, he says, Julius Caesar says, I'm going to shift the alphabet. There's 26 letters in the alphabet. Now, the possible remainders of 26 are 0 to 25. So I'll call A 0, B 1, C 2, D 3. I'm going to shift them. That will be how I scramble up all the messages. So he came up with this formula. X, where X will be the specific position of the letter, plus some jumbling aspect. Modulo 26, meaning that when I add these numbers together, I want the remainder when I divide by 26. That's how it works mathematically. So let's look at an example. H in the Alphabet is the seventh letter, math numerically. A is 0, B is 1, C is 2, D is 3, D is 4, H is 7, U is 20. And I'm going to use K is 7. So when I do 7 plus 7, I get 14. 14, letter of the alphabet, would be O. When I take U, U is 20. 20 plus 7 is 27. 
But remember, my numbers are between 0 and 26, so I want the remainder of 27 when I divide by 26, which is 1. And 1 is mapped to B. So the word help gets mapped to OBSR. And what Julius Caesar would do is, in his private communications, is he would take his message, he would shift the letters at a constant rate, and he would send them across to his army. Attack this wall. Defend that fortification. Can you bring me back some cheese? All this private communication was used by his Julius Caesar. Set. But of course, that was 2,000 years ago, right? We've come a long way in 2,000 years. In Julius Caesar's time, there was no, no uh, computers, right? And in modern day cryptography, something is different. And what cryptographers do now is, instead of using this shifting of letters, they use other fields of mathematics, number theory, that they go very deep in, they use something called prime numbers. A relatively simple idea started in 1976, where famous computer scientists and mathematicians started using prime numbers for encryption. Now, you must have all heard of prime numbers before, and they think, why prime numbers? Well, it's because prime numbers are so unique and special. They don't have a pattern. It's hard for an attacker to determine the meaning of private messages because of prime numbers, there's nothing there for them to relate to. They go on forever, and there's no systematic way to determine which one is next.